Hi guys, welcome to this next session of Portfolio Management for CFA Level 2. Today we will be covering the last reading in Portfolio Management, so not the last class specifically, as I said in the previous one as well. We will be covering all the readings in separate order and comparison to how they are given in the syllabus because these are more or less isolated readings. So the last reading in your portfolio management is also one of the new additions to your syllabus. So it's not a topic that's been there for a very long time. It's a relatively newer addition to your CFA level two syllabus. The reading is trading cost and electronic market. So you have trading cost and electronic markets. Now this reading itself is two separate topics. Trading cost is a separate topic. Electronic markets is a separate topic. So we'll be doing two sessions for this reading, one covering trading cost and the other covering electronic markets. So let's start with the trading cost part itself. Let's start with the introduction. Now, the first thing we have to understand is, well, what exactly does trading cost mean? Now, trading cost, we normally have a general idea that, you know, if you purchase shares in the market, you have to pay some brokerage or some stock exchange charges and some other charges that might be levied on you. All of these together make up the trading cost. Now, from the market, we can generally take a few clear examples of what trading cost is. So you, let's say, want to buy a share in the market. You buy that share, but you also have to pay some brokerage fees. That brokerage fees is a trading cost. Then there might be some stock exchange charges levied on you, some other taxes and stuff. All of those together make up the trading cost. Now the trading costs is divided into two components. Explicit and implicit. Explicit costs are the ones which you know outright, like when you make a purchase, you get these costs identified separately to you. For example, when you buy a share, your broker does inform you specifically how much brokerage has been charged, maybe by way of a monthly statement, quarterly statement, weekly statement, whatever your broker is following. He would also tell you how much stock exchange charges have been levied on all of your transaction, all the uh, service tax or GST, whatever the tax is in any particular country, how much of that has been levied on each transaction. So these are all the costs which are explicit known outright. So the examples are brokerage, then any other fees from stock exchange or any other third party involved. We could have certain service taxes also or GST in uh, case of India. But aside from this, there can also be a few other costs. For example, let's talk about a large investment banking firm. It does a lot of trading. It does a lot of investment, maybe on its own accounts or on behalf of client accounts. It also has a very big staff. So it's paying salary to a lot of employees. So larger traders would generally have a team of experts, a team of traders who would operate. And in those cases, the salary they are paying to those traders, to those employees is also explicit. It's known and it's right there for us. So salary is also something that could be a relevant part or any staff related cost or any administration cost which is being incurred in case of normally the larger traders. I'm not talking about small retail investors like you and me. I'm talking about big firms. Now, these are some of the examples of explicit costs and there's a good chance most of us already knew this part. This is the newer part, implicit cost. Implicit cost is the one which you are not outright told or being given a proper receipt for it. Rather, it is going from your pocket, but you're not fully aware of it. So in economics, we have a concept of implied cost. Think of it as you living in your own house. If you didn't own that house, you would be paying that rent. So the implied benefit you're getting is that you're now saving that rent. 
So implied is basically you're not outright knowing that you're getting a benefit or you're paying a cost, but you are receiving that benefit or cost. So that's the same concept here with the implicit trading cost. You don't outright know that you're bearing the cost, but these costs are still being paid from your pocket. So let's look at some of the examples here. Some of the major concepts of this entire reading are here in the implicit cost. Now, I should clarify right now for this session trading cost and for the next one electronic markets because this is a relatively new reading you'll have a lot of terms and definitions that are very important for the exam so any new reading that comes up normally there is more theoretical topics in them rather than practical so in quants also we still have a few topics which are there in context of machine learning, big data. All of those are slightly more theoretical. They are also relatively newer additions to the slips. So in all of these topics, the terms and definitions become a very important part of your entire studies. So make sure you are comfortable with all the terms and you understand what they imply. So for the implicit cost, let's look at some of the examples. The first implicit cost that we have is the bid ask spread. Now, bid ask spread is basically the difference between a bid price and an ask price. Now, bid price is the price at which you as an investor would be able to sell your security to a dealer or to anyone else in the market. And ask price is the price at which you as an investor would buy from the market or from the dealer. The same thing can be looked at in opposite sense when viewed from the context of dealer. The price at which dealer would purchase securities is known as bid price and the price at which dealer will sell the securities is known as ask price. So just keep it clear that the same price can be looked at from a buyer's perspective or from a seller's perspective ideally to avoid any confusion always think of it from perspective of a dealer even if there is no dealer involved even in, when you know when we are discussing stock market or stuff just assume that if one party was dealer how would we treat bid and ask price because that would be very clear for you in the exam you will never get confused between bid and ask prices so just to repeat one more time, the price at which dealer would buy the security or I as an investor would sell the security is known as the bid price and the price at which dealer would sell the security and I as an investor would buy that security that is known as ask price. So in India and you know in most countries one of the common things that we can observe the bid ask spread is the currency. You can have this in any sort of dealer oriented market. So a lot of bond uh, heavy markets like US, Euro, you might have this being a prominent feature in the main market as well. But in a lot of developing countries, the equity market is more prominent and this becomes a very small part. So the one common factor that I'm going to use so that everyone can understand it is the currencies. Let's say you go to a bank to exchange $100. $100 is what you have and you want to exchange this amount. You go to a bank and the bank has a bid rate of let's say 74 rupees per dollar, which means bank says it would buy these $100 from you at 75 rupees per dollar. And the bank has an ask rate of rupees 75 per dollar. It means bank will sell currency to you at a rate of 75 rupees a dollar. So if the bank were to buy, it would buy at 74. If it were to sell, it would sell it at 75. This difference of one rupee, let's say I have decided that I am going to first buy the currency from the bank and then sell it to the same bank. So just imagine for a moment that you know, someone is interested in doing it. I know it sounds uh, 
pointless transaction but just for the sake of an example what i have decided is i'm going to buy the currency from the bank and then i'm going to sell the currency to the bank now there might be all of these charged in both the transactions of buying and selling none of these actually cover this difference this difference of one dollar is not explicitly covered as a cost like when i have the transaction done and the bank gives me a receipt for the transaction they might not mention this specifically in the sale transaction where the bank is selling the dollars to me when i'm buying the dollars in that case the bank would simply mention 75 as the exchange rate and when i am selling the dollars back to the bank it would mention 74 in no case would it mention both of them and say that this one dollar is an explicit cost so we might have some fees some taxes some charges those would be explicit cost this difference of a bid rate and an ask rate is the bid ask right it is the first sort of main example of implicit cost another sort of implicit cost we have is delay cost So at times in the market, because the prices are moving very quickly, prices are updating in real time. Let's say I wanted to buy a share. I wanted to buy Apple. And let's say, just for the sake of simplicity, I wanted to buy Apple shares at $500. So this is the price of one share. When I made the purchase, I went to my broker's online facility, my DMAT account, whatever you have. And I decided to click on the purchase and place my order. By the time the order was executed and I got my shares, the price was, let's say, $501. So this is when I have decided, and this is what I have actually received as the shares. The difference between these two in terms of time in the modern uh, securities market, the difference between these two could be a matter of just a few seconds maybe two seconds five seconds or in certain cases 10 seconds nothing more than that within that this one dollar that i have had to pay extra now this is known as delay cost so delay cost is nothing but the higher price that you might have to pay because of delay from when you have decided you want to buy a stock you placed an order all the way till you actually receiving the security. So when you place the order and when you receive the security, there is normally a small, uh, there could be a small gap there of, you know, one second, two second, three seconds. That gap could also increase the price. So this price increase is the delay cost. Again, it's going from your pocket. No one is going to identify this $1 separately for you in any sort of transaction receipt. So, this is another case of an implicit cost by the name of delay cost. Now we have two other things. We have the last two examples we have for our implicit cost are price impact cost or market impact cost. Both are you know interchangeable uh, names. So you have price impact cost and the opportunity cost. Now both of these I'm not going to be explaining right away. These are related mostly with larger trades or you know something on the lines of block trade. So we'll discuss this when we go a little bit further into calculations and uh, we have a proper example to cover both of these. So for now, these are my trading costs. I can have them in two categories, explicit and implicit. And uh, implicit are the ones that at the end of the day are going to be paid out of your pocket, but you don't necessarily have to be outright aware of it. You're not informed that this is the cost you're paying. So, that is the intro part.